All right, so hopping on here real quick. Oh, it's not gonna be real quick. I'm actually setting up my dad's bow. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I got this Traverse. I sold my Black 5, or actually traded it, traded cross for this Traverse. I bead blasted it and then brought it back <clears throat> to raw aluminum and then Cerakoted it myself. I used an Air Cure Cerakote. This is C240 if I'm not mistaken. It's a Coyote Brown. Um, super cool um, color. Matthew doesn't make one in that color so I figured it'd be something unique and nice to have. Uh, black limbs as you can see up top here. Um, I'm going to be running my old CVE site for my pops and then also the tight spot quiver. It's a five arrow quiver. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through the setup and how I set my bows up. Um, each bow is slightly different. Um, this is Matthew, so there is some things that are Matthew specific, but they're all generally the same um, for setup. So gonna kind of go through this and talk about it and just walk through the process. Now this this part's pretty simple. Once you get a sight, it's just two screws. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they're 10 30 seconds. Um, they're different lengths, or they're sorry, 10 24. Um, they're a, like a, a wider, more coarse thread. Um, each sight's gonna be a little bit different how much depth you need anywhere from a half inch to three quarters inch got two of them right here and then you got two that mount on the back of the site as well right there so you can mount the tight spot quiver um, you can also obviously use the mount that's on the top there's one on the bottom right here and that will allow you to utilize uh, a two-piece quiver that is mounted to the bow. This right here is gonna allow me to, or allow my dad, take this off. If he wants to do any sort of shooting without it or just take it off, he feels more comfortable. He does a lot of just uh, like blind shooting. So he's not gonna be spot and stock too much. So he doesn't have to worry about having the quiver on him at all times. So something super useful there. And uh, yeah. So since this is already on, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna mount the rest. We got a Hamsky primer rest that we're gonna be put on here. Um, it is a limb driven rest and uh, just kind of walk through it when I install it. So this right here is the Hamsky primer arrow rest. And purchase it, this is main body here you need a mounting bracket that is on the back here right there so this is what's going to mount to the riser this right here is going to mount, it's grooved. So it grooves, slotted nice and good, and allows for three different positions here. So you can mount it how you like. Um, it gives you a little bit extra adjustability. If you are running out of wind, uh, elevation, you could uh, switch to a different hole here and it'll allow you to get more elevation. Um, out of it. This is going to go on the limb. You put this on the bottom of the limb when you tie off the cord. There's an arrow holder here. This is going to be the screw here that mounts this bracket up here. We're just going to start off with just getting it in. I'm going to start off with the center one here and uh, go from there. So it's mounted, you can see, you can adjust the height with that. This right here is the main screw that mounts to the bow, and then there's a set screw here. 
So this is all that comes in the package for the primer arrow rest minus what I didn't show is the felt. I put this on earlier today. Um, it's just a felt that goes over. The primer is a stainless uh, whale tail style release. Um, you can see back here. So comes with the felt to put it on. Um, I might eventually get the one that's got the rubber coating on it, um, but we'll see how long this felt lasts. All right, so we're gonna take the Hamsky rest here. Take this so it's kind of just out of the way, falls down there. I'm gonna mount it up. Now I had, I have to loosen this real quick. I had a Hamsky on this prior um, to this primer rest. I had a Hamsky uh, Hunter Pro. So it's gonna be very, very similar to the setup. Um, what I need to do on this is actually move the elevation over a bit because they have it all the way in on this. So with it all the way in, it actually doesn't have clearance with um, the cable guard. So get this in here. I like to run these as close to the riser as humanly possible. When you're filming things, it never goes quite as planned. But you want to get this snug, not like tight yet. You just want to get snug, and so you can still kind of maneuver it around a bit without having any issues. I'm gonna start just like that for now. What I like to do is I like to come in here with, it's gonna be hard to kind of show you guys, but I like to have the containment here level. I try to get as level as possible. This is, you're able to move this a little bit, so I need to actually make sure that the rest itself is 100% level. Um, with the Trinity rest, you have no adjustability with this containment. There, it doesn't rotate. I believe it's actually mounted in two spots but so there's that it's as close as I can get it you can see the washer there isn't allowing it to go any further and you need that washer obviously to disperse the pressure across the rest this helps it lock down a little bit better So that's nice and tight. After I do that, I like to go in and do the set screw. The set screw doesn't have to be super, super tight. Um, just snug enough that it's giving it that extra pressure that it needs. Fortunately, I have issues with that last little Allen there on my tool. It doesn't, it's a um, 564. Is that what it is? 
you know, 564, so it's kind of bent at the end, so it doesn't quite work on this that well. Um, <clears throat> so that's essentially locked in place. I'm not going to worry about the cord quite yet. The flipper here is up, and I'm going to rotate you guys around to show you how I go about doing this now. So what I'm going to do is, right over here, I'm going to grab some of these arrows. These are the arrows my dad wants to shoot. He's had them forever and wants to utilize them. So I'm going to take them. These are gold tip uh, Hunter XTs. And uh, they're in the weight that he's going to have to use. 28, green, or 28 draw. We're doing 65 pounds. Um, <clears throat> uh, total weight GPI is 8.9 grains. These are just a standard diameter arrow. So lock that in place. Now with this primer rest, we're gonna have to do all this manually. It does not have any micro adjustments on it. So <clears throat> it's gotta be very di diligent with how you move this. You can obviously get a little too squirrely with it and uh, end up moving it way too much. I know my hand's in the way, I'm sorry, but it's just the, easiest way to go about doing it. So Matthews like to be at 13 sixteenths. Okay. Okay, make sure it's snug. Got it at 13 sixteenths. Just double check after. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> I like to make sure that I start off with the arrow level or just a touch knock high. And by knock high, that means having this portion, the back end of the arrow, just a slight bit higher than um, the rest of the arrow. So if you did, Let's see if we can get this to adjust. So here. So by level, obviously, I mean having the bubble within the hash marks. Or you have it just kind of touching the back of that. And that will make it knock high. So I take this and I clamp it on the arrow. You can kind of see the bubble here is high. So the tip is high, not the knock. The front end of the arrow is high. So I wanna go over here on the other side. And again, remember this is not micro adjust, so you got to hold on to it. You're gonna lower this just a little bit. Sometimes it needs a little, little bit of coaxing, a little shimmy here and there and so I got it fairly level now it is just a touch and by a touch I mean probably a 30 second high knock uh, knock high right now so this is how I have it set up and uh, the bow is essentially at center shot right now. That's just how I have it set up. You want to have it through this burger hole right here. That's where the rest mounts. This is the threaded portion that comes through the riser. You want to try to get the center of the arrow through that with these bows. <clears throat> it allows it to be in the center of the bow and uh, get the best tunability out of it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with the string attachment here for the rest. 
See, originally when I got the bow, he put some felt strip here and on the back. I'm just gonna keep that. Um, it's really no big issue either way. Um, one thing is you need to do, so with the primer, it comes with the rebound dampener on it already installed. And then the back end here is the loop. You're gonna end up doing a D loop knot around this. It's gonna allow you to get a little cinch on there nice and tight. And then also allow you to be able to take it off without any issues if you ever have to come down to that. But you're gonna take this, the spray it up just like you're doing a D loop. I did a video on how to do the D loop material and tying that. So you fray it up. And you want to just kind of make a good ball out of it there. As you can see, fraying it up allows for that to happen a lot easier than it would be if uh, you're not fraying it up. It kind of ends up getting into a hot mess. So... Let's see if I can get you closer here. What you're going to do is you're going to come around the outside of the limb. You can see here, outside of the limb. And you want to make sure that you are on that felt pad or the pad that comes with the rest, which is going to look similar to this. It's a rubber piece there. With this, you just put on the bottom part of the limb. You don't do it on both sides. This guy, when I first got the bow, has felt on both sides. But you put this on the bottom of the limb. It's going to allow for better traction of that string on the cable so it doesn't slide around. But like a D-loop, you just do it just like that. If you want to know how to do that, I have it in one of my other videos on my page. Kind of hard to get it nice and close for you guys. But. It's going to slide around on you a bit when you first are installing it. So you need to make sure you got it nice and tight. Pull on it. It's locked into place there now. Nice and good. I like to have this close to the bottom. I like to have it, I mean, probably a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch off the limb. So I'll adjust it down. That seems about right right there for me. I'm all right with that. I'm just kind of feeding it through this here. And then you want to just really just pull on it, make sure it's all the way through nice and tight. All right. So then with this, now that that's tied in, that ain't going nowhere. Come up to the front where the rest is. And you're going to have this little football clamp here. What I like to do is I actually like to tie a Prusik knot. And... Uh, just allows so that you can tune it in the field. Um, you don't have to whip out an Allen every time you're using it. Um, it's just easier for me and it holds really well. It also, you don't have to worry about having this plastic piece bang into anything if you do have a quiver on it. So again, take the end. Spray it up a bit. Let's see how we're gonna do that. There we go. Okay. And this is gonna be challenging doing it. Let's see. Doesn't help that I'm wearing a black shirt either. But 
So prosignant, you can Google it. I'm, I'll probably try to do a video on how to do this. I always have to end up looking at it again and trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing. But most of the time, I can get it fairly close without messing it up too bad. So I want to pull this and then feed that back through. I try to utilize as much of the string as possible. I don't want to just keep cutting and cutting and cutting because sooner or later you're going to end up having no string. And I like to have as much as I can. Um, just cautionary measures, you have excess it's always good to have when you're in the field. I'm slowly getting there. All right. So, got the prusik knot in. It's got a little bit of excess here. Uh, but it's ultra lightweight. You don't have to worry about that plastic flopping around. So, it's good there. I'm going to bring this up and uh, then work on it a little bit more. Except I actually have to put it in a bow press, as you see here. Matthews did something cool with their newer bows, and it has an adapter here on each one of the limbs where the finger... Uh, the bow press goes in, it's on all the limbs, and it allows just for locking into place. <clears throat> so now I have to take this silver piece off here, and then you can see there's a bolt there, and a bolt there, and then come up to the top here, you got a bolt right there, and a bolt right there, and those need to come out, and then what I'll be doing here is swapping it out with new modules from Matthews. These are 28 inch draw length modules. These are 29 and a half. So 28 and uh, be nicely set up for my pops then. And then I'll be putting on the draw board, which is also part of my press here, attach it here, bring it to full draw, measure the air on, I'm gonna cut it and start it from there. So that'll be the next step, I'll show what I do there. But for now, I'm gonna be taking these off and installing the 28 inch draw. Forgot to hit record, but got this one off and I'll show you how I did that on this one here. So, Allen, those two bolts that I mentioned in a little bit earlier here, these tend to be a pain sometimes. From the factory, they use a blue Loctite, and sometimes it really gets stuck in there. Um, I've luckily been able to take these off before, <clears throat> so these screws aren't really seized in there but I have had them seize on me before and it is a nightmare you have to get an easy out set just to get it out and it's just a huge pain but this out here and once you get those two screws out comes on out 
Now, let's see if we can't get this squared away here. With this one, I took off the draw stop screw. It's just a little bit easier, I've noticed, with the traverse, for some reason, the way the mods are, <clears throat> the neck's a little bit longer, and uh, it's easier to get them off and on when you take them off. Let's see if it's the same with this one here. Might not be. Seems to be a little bit more, yeah, it's a little bit more of an open mod. So, uh, let me adjust you here. Let me see if I can adjust you. All right, got you there. Mods there. So you wanna lift this up a little bit. Make sure you got both of the holes lined up and you're not screwing in the back hole on the one that's supposed to be on the other one. Okay. Dropping things here. Let's give it a little bit of extra, nothing crazy, because like I said, it will seize up on you. You just want to make sure that you do it tight enough to where it's not going to loosen back up on you when you're in the field, and then that would be horrific. So let's move over to this one here. Slide it in. Just like that. Get both of your set screws. And again, you're gonna move this around to make sure you got them lined up. And that's that. Let's get that one started. Okay. Just a little bit of love here. Like that. All right. So that was simple. Those are the draw mods installed. And now what I'm going to do is throw it on the draw board, check the timing of the cam, make sure that each one of the draw stops are touching simultaneously, adjust accordingly, and then once it is set, I will go and check the length of the arrows.
want that to happen. Make sure you throw that lock on because you will have some issues with that. you real quick so if you look here you can see that that draw stops off it's gonna be hard to take you off of this real quick and that draw stops off as well but it's closer so what I'm gonna to try to do is add one twist of the string from this here, this yoke, and come down. I'm just going to attach down here. That's going to allow me to speed up this system up here and see if it does. I'm not going to, I'm actually going to do half a twist, see if that helps. So um, I'm going to do that real quick on the bow press and then uh, see where it gets. So the top cam was just a touch slow. And we want to just add one twist to this cable here, the one that actually attaches to the lower cam. So we're not doing one twist. I keep saying one twist, I'm sorry. Half a twist. Make sure that you are looking at the threads to make sure that you're going in the correct direction because you'll be chasing your tail if you don't. When you're using the bow press to pick up the slack, make sure everything's in the channels that they're supposed to be. Pull up on the string and bring everything back to a little bit of tension. Hold it a little bit until it comes down. Good to go. So the reason I was adding arrow is because if for some reason the string does happen to break or something along those lines, you don't want to be dry firing your bow. You want to have something that will take that energy and kind of just have a sacrificial arrow in there if something does happen, especially since I'm pointing it at a concrete wall. That was too much, so I'm just going to go back. It was close before, but this is far too different. When I was demonstrating it at draw, uh, it, it wasn't all the way at full draw, but it just kind of demonstrated you the gap in between the two. This one's a lot worse. So I'm going to just add or take a twist, half a twist out now um, on the bottom and work with it from there. Now the strings that I have on here are made by A3 Archery. They are a bloodline material it is a waxless string which is amazing 
the technology that they come out with nowadays. But it is extremely durable and super high quality stuff. So we don't want to go one half of a twist back. Do that, pull this up again. Sorry, the birds are getting a little wild. I'll just check it again. Use that rubber band around the grip. It's kind of just an added safety thing. Holds the bow up a little bit better. Just work with it there. Now, actually, what I should do is what I'm going to do is mark the arrow at where I'm going to cut it. Bring it to full draw, and you can see here that there's quite a bit of length left over all the way out here. I like to cut it at the riser to begin with and kind of go from there. Um, I will probably just be able to tune this to this length. It keeps the broadhead out in front of your hand. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and since my dad's going to be shooting it, I kind of want just that added safety. When I cut it, I'll cut it at that and I'll kind of tune it from there. Some of my arrows that I'm shooting with my VXR are a little bit further back. Um, and my V3X is right about there. So work with that. I'm going to just cut one arrow for now at that length and see how it is. Now with this bow, you can adjust the top hats on it to really get that arrow flying. What that does is it shims the cam left and right and you can tune this bow to that arrow so you don't have to necessarily tune the arrow to the bow per se. Obviously you're gonna have an arrow that could be too stiff have an arrow that's too light so you still need to tune that arrow but you can get something that's relatively close and still get that bow tuned to where it's going to shoot that arrow if it is preferably you do slightly stiff if you're going with an arrow and you're not like a hundred percent right where it's supposed to be slightly stiffs a little bit better than it is when it's slightly on the weaker side weaker side is going to be um, a little bit more erratic so I'm going to do that and then uh, shoot it and see how it does. <clears throat> when you cut the arrows, you want to make sure that you square the ends. I have this little 3D printed squaring tool. You put it on, there's sandpaper right here, and rotate it. Make sure you keep pressure down so you're not flexing it a bunch, but you just rotate it here. <clears throat> make sure it's square. What you can do as well, that's super helpful get some sort of sharpie that isn't black because carbon is black mark the ends here it's not going to show up very well on there you go it does actually so silver on the end and then when you go to square it it'll show if you still have any area that isn't quite square
don't know how well it's going to focus, but there's a little area. Still some. And when you do this, what you're doing is you're just making sure that it is a square and where the broadhead is going to be lining up onto it, the insert. You don't want any sort of <clears throat> in what is it abnormalities is the word I'm looking for if it is perfectly flat you're just making that arrow perform to the best that it can I think my yeah my sandpaper isn't the best it's kind of old All right, so it might just look shiny now, but I got all that off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh this arrow where it is right now with no insert on it, no anything, and see what I like. Um, <clears throat> see if I can't get. So I'm essentially just building this on the fly. I'm making sure I haven't everything what where I need it all right so I got a hundred grain head here I got this arrow with a hundred grain head and just the arrow it's at 384 which I think is excessively light especially for what we're gonna be hunting it's gonna be pigs and deer now that's not with an insert with an insert 396 I'm gonna go in here And things are just falling everywhere here. I'll thread this in here. So three ninety six. I would really like to have it in the mid fours. Because what I'm doing is this bow is going to be set up at 65 pounds. So I got a fact weight. If I throw the fact weight in it on the back, it comes out to 446. I'm thinking that's a decent arrow setup um, for my pops. It's gonna give them a good amount of speed out of a 65 pound bow. And it's also gonna give them a decent amount of weight that's gonna allow them to uh, punch through that thicker hide that pigs are gonna have. So what I'm gonna do now is install these. I'm gonna take the fletching off the back. I'm just gonna shave it down and then bear shaft tune it and see how it shoots. Just to show you here, that is and insert with the fact weight on it. I believe this is 50 grains. So a standard insert here, and the insert with the fact weight, just threads on the back. If I'm not mistaken, it is a 50 grain fact weight. Let's see if I can just toss it on the scale for you guys real quick. I'm like 98% sure. Yep, 50 exactly. Very, very precise. That's awesome. So, do that. <clears throat> you can just put it on. Um, they do have issues every once in a while from backing out. Now, if you wanted to add weight to these uh, and with this already installed, they make a tool. Uh, I have it here. I'm not going to dig it out, but it's the length of an arrow and it just goes in the back you can thread this in now what i like to use is hot melt glue heat it up put it on it allows me to um like clock the broadheads to where it matches with the fletching you don't necessarily have to do that i'm a little ocd when it comes to that so i like to be able to do that 
So heat up the glue. Get it on here. Want to get in all the grooves. And then I just give it a little bit of love and slide it on in. And so that insert installed, there's glue that is excess on the outside. Let that cool down and then you're able to just push it down and it rolls right off. But I'm going to take these veins off. I'm probably going to end up throwing um, some different veins on the back for him. I have a bunch of different ones that I can utilize. Um, <clears throat> I've got a bunch of the PM23s in um, orange. I got a bunch of Max Stelz in pink. Um, so I can just kind of go through that, see what my pops wants, which ones, if he wants to do a four fletch, um, PM23s or a three fletch max stealth. Um, they come out to roughly the same weight. They're, I think the four fletch is still slightly lighter, but see, let it cool down just a little bit and it comes off nicely. You can just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and you'll be good. Make sure this is 50 grain or 100 grain, sorry. So now that I got this installed, put this on this arrow here, got the field tip, double check the weight. It's going to be a little bit heavier with that hot melt glue in there now. But not much. It's 447.6. So it's a good solid setup, I think, for his bow. Um, and now I'm just going to kind of go through and get this dialed with the bear shaft. So I'm going to try to do this at the best of my ability with this shorter draw. Looks pretty good. Now I'm off to the side from you guys, but coming out nice and straight just how I like it looks to be good and level so essentially that bow is set up now and I just need to have my pops go through um, check the peep height make sure that's good I'll make sure that's anchored in and then we'll go through each one of the pins and make sure that's dialed in um, I could do the the pins as long as I know that the bow is tuned and the peep height is where it is I'll get it real nice and close for him and then I'll have him go back up and over it but all done you guys got to see it walk through it and uh, hope it helped